Hello, everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. <clears throat> I hope everybody is doing fabulous and having a great week. No matter where you are, no matter what situation you're in, understand if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. I want to encourage everyone to stand up and press through. This life we're living, the reward doesn't come due to a pathway of ease or the circumvention of struggles. It comes because you're committed to going the distance. It is not violence. It is not resources. It is not any of the things that set men and women uh, who's, who excel apart from the rest, except the distance that they are willing to go to achieve it. Most people shut down. Go the distance. Uh, I'm taking this time to talk about something that is immensely important to me. It's something I've written about, done num numerous studies of. It's something that as a man I try to live in my life daily, despite all the challenges that come from decisions you made as a youth and, and so many other things that can get in the way of it. But being a good man, uh, specifically in the area of fatherhood, of course, those of you who follow me know that I strive every day to be the best husband to my wife, Marion, that I can be. Uh, and that includes being a great father. Uh, but um, I want to talk to uh, both men and women, and specifically black men and black women. Uh, that's where my passion lies. It has nothing to do with feeling any other kind of way about anybody. I just have a love for my people and the love for my people dictate my be dictates my behavior and how I handle anybody else. I'm going to handle you based on how you handle who I love. And so I want to talk to my people. I want to talk to my people from a place of love. And I hope that this gets shared and it's taken in the context that it's given. I'm not here to judge anybody because I'm not perfect. I'm still striving and struggling to be the best I can be. And I can tell you with a daughter that's 36 this year, later this year, you never stop parenting. You just change the manner in which you parent and you try to do better. Uh, but I want to talk to you about something that's on my heart and, it, 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 and it's at a divine level in, in the sense of intimacy and intensity. And I'm speaking as it has been given to me in my relationship, unique relationship with God. This has nothing to do with religion whatsoever. This is me personally and my personal relationship and how I'm being dealt with and by God. The God in me, the God around me, the God through me. And so I want to talk to you. I'm going to start with the men, brothers. One of the things I do at black, with the black man lead rite of passage is condition and train the minds of young black men to be strong black, young black boys to be strong black men who love our women and take care of our children. But I must talk to those of us who have already entered into adulthood, those of us who have fathered children and and have the responsibility of mentoring and, and, and grooming and preparing and empowering our progeny. We have a natural yearning as men to seek peace. And we have a tendency to avoid conflict at all cost. And so when we find ourselves in environments in which there's a lot of hostility, a lot of conflict, a lot of negative energy, a lot of toxicity, if we are anywhere where we need to be in our frame, we recognize, okay, this isn't where I need to be and I need to remove myself. I need to find peace. Here's my concern, and I'm speaking from the heart of a man that has seen this in himself. We can't be so enamored with peace 
that we move away from our responsibilities as fathers. Let me explain what I mean by that. Sometimes we don't make the right choices. Or sometimes we just simply outgrow choices we've made. And that puts us in situations where we end up with children from women that we can no longer be with. And where there are cases where these breaks with these women are amicable and everybody gets along and everything is going, most of the time there's hostility. Most of the times there's a lot of things going on. And this isn't pointing the finger at any particular person. This is talking about the mindset of men. And I'm going to get to women in a minute. But in, in the process of getting away from that negative energy so you can think, so you can function, so you can be prepared, so you can get ready, make sure that we're not moving away from these babies. They need us. And sometimes what that's going to mean is that you're going to have to fight to be there. You're going to have to put your need for peace aside long enough to wage a war that sends a message to your child that they matter. Trust me, I understand. If you've dealt with something so long it's just so negative, you know ain't nothing but negativity coming from it and that it's nothing positive there, you want to get away from it. But you got something there. You create it. So you've got to put the yearning for peace aside and you've got to sit up and you've got to send a message to the child that they matter. And that means you matter enough to me that I'm about to wage war to be ensure that I have an emphatic and intense influence on your success in life because I'm present. See, being a father isn't simply about finding the caveats and corners where there's comfort. No, oftentimes because of the culture we are in and the culture that has been evolving over the last few decades, we tend to make decisions without really thinking them through. We tend to move into relationships without giving any true gravity. We tend to create new lives without ever giving consideration to what type of life they will have based off the parents that, that, that birthed and created them. And we end up with situations where we're moving on with our lives and we're growing, we're expanding, we're becoming. But we cannot walk into that becoming and leave behind what we created. If you have a child out there, this is from me to you. The God in me is speaking to every <coughs> black man. If you got a child out there <coughs> and your DNA is flowing through their veins, you owe it to them to stand up and fight. And I'm talking specifically to the ones who are being pushed out. If you're ones that you, you have an access to the kid, the, the woman is telling you anytime you want to come by and you're not there, that's a whole other thing we need to deal with. That's just being trifling. That's being selfish. I'm talking about the men who are literally sitting up shedding tears because they don't have consistent access to their babies. And the alternative is to go to war. And you just, you feel like, I don't have it in me. And number one is you don't trust the system. I, I get it. I know the system in and out. I know what it does. You don't trust the system because the system doesn't really care about you. The system would love to see you destroyed. So you sit back and you just, you cannot. You don't have the luxury of comfort and safety. These babies need us to fight for them. If you got one out there, two or three, it's time to saddle up. It's time to arm yourselves. This is not about destroying anybody. I don't want any harm to come to the, the mother of my children. And I hope you don't want any. But what you have to do is say, in protecting you, I'm not going to leave my baby vulnerable. In providing a space for you, people who know me know I don't badmouth my exes. Matter of fact, it's a couple people get upset with me 
because I refuse to tell the story of behind what's ever has happened and going on because other people are telling stories. Man, I let the life I live speak for me. If you're around me for any stretch of time and you believe the crap that's being spewed about me by somebody, hey, that's on you. I'm not going to spend my time doing that. So I don't have to go tear somebody down to build myself up or to save me. I live my life every day, good, bad, and indifferent. And I believe I live it hard enough, straight enough, and pure enough to the values that I have that I can stand on my own. But and in the, So I don't attack the, my children's mothers. But at the same time, there comes a time as a man, you're gonna have to sit up and say, in, 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 for the sake of peace, I have, but I no longer have that luxury to operate for the sake of peace because see, peace has allowed uh, a bunch of mothers to manipulate situations and, and, and do something. Again, ladies, be very careful on how you jump in this because I'm not talking about men who could be there and aren't. I'm specifically talking about men who are begging to see their kids and not, or men who are having highly manipulative uh, stipulations put in to how they see their kids. You can't see the kid unless I'm around. You can't, all these little things. If that man is not going to harm that child, and you know if the man's not going to harm him or not, you can come up with all this stuff. Now, and the thing is, you got to put what happened between you and him to the side. This is no longer about you and her or you and him. This is about the child that needs the balance of masculine energy and feminine energy functioning in their lives to create something. It's already going to be a challenge because it's not existing in the home. Now, in an ideal situation, you, you go on and you meet someone and she goes on and she meets someone and now everybody's functioning with a sense of responsibility where the child is first. Now the child has more than enough masculine and feminine energy. And I know it can happen. I've seen it. But we have to get outside of ourselves. Again, I know the yearning of peace when you've been in, 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 in immersed in toxicity and conflict. And just the desire, man, I can't deal with that. I can't deal. But there comes a point in time you've got to. Our babies need us to be functional and present in their lives. And if, and if you got to go to war, even if you lose the war, you got the record of the war you fought to say, baby, I've always tried to be there. You've got to stand up, man. Now, sisters, if you have a man who is trying to be there for his child, Stop holding the child hostage. Stop leveraging the child to deliver a message that no longer matters. Stop basing how you're going to allow that child to have access to their father based on how you feel about the father and what happened in your relationship with the father. This isn't about who was right or who was wrong. This is about the child. Now, if the father is somebody that you know is gonna put the child in harm's way in one way or another, then you need to make it known. It needs to be put out and it needs to be understood. But there are a bunch of you out there that's just still angry about what happened or didn't happen. And everything is projected out on how that man deals with that kid. If that man is gonna love that kid, if that man is going to be present consistently, keyword consistently present with that kid, let that man have access. Let him talk to him. Let him pick him up. Let him spend time. And this whole idea of you being upset because he's moved on, you got to trust that who he's moved on to. Number one is meet the person. Again, put your feelings aside. This is not about you. It's about the child. You've got to be mature enough to say, okay, who is this person he's with? Can I trust my child around him? You, you have a responsibility. Nobody's telling you not to do that. You have a responsibility to know. And men, you need to know who she has your children around. 
Now, again, this isn't about trying to control her being with someone. You moved on. She has a right to be with someone. But you need to make sure that the person she's with is going to have your children's best interests at heart. Because what we know now is a large percentage, we're talking statistics now, a large percentage of children who are molested as minors are molested in homes in which their biological father is absent and many times by his replacement. So, we need to be vigilant in that. Mothers, you need to be aware of who he has. And, and I'm like this. I've never had my kids around a woman. My, my older kids, me and their moms divorced in the 90s. In the 90s. And they can count on a couple of fingers who I had them around. And the next person was my next wife. So I don't have my kids just leisurely around people. Like I said, they are adults now, but leisurely around people. But when I found someone, it had to be someone that I trusted. Someone that I've literally gauged in how they are with children because my kids matter. They had to bring something to the table that benefited not just me, but my progeny because they come with me and I, I and if they happen to have kids i'm gonna bring something to the table for yours too i'm gonna love them like they're mine but i'm gonna need you to love mine like they're yours and then i'm gonna need their mother to be able to see that love and feel secure but you gotta want to see the love you gotta want to be over it enough to see what's best for the child and if the child can blossom in it if the child can grow in it then it's your responsibility to immerse them in it. We have got to do better when it comes to this. So black men, I'm calling you. If you got a kid out there, I don't care how toxic mommy is, it's time to set this thing straight. And if she don't want to come to the table, you're going to have to legally force it. Your child is worth it. Yeah, I know it won't be a peace for a minute, but I, I, I don't know how you can have peace anyway and your baby not be a part of your life it's got to be some turmoil i'm speaking from past experience i'm speaking i know it's turmoil when you when you got that situation and the baby's being used to to, to, to get at you and you can't see it yeah it's some turmoil you you don't 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 sit on it don't get comfortable with it it's time to go to war. It's time for us to stand up. Our children need us. We can't keep sending broken babies out there and expecting them to perform in this world. So I'm calling men to the to the mat. I'm calling women, sisters. This is not your child is not how you settle your score with your ex. Now, if he's not doing what he's supposed to do and the opportunity is there for him to do it, do what you got to do. But using the system to break somebody because you're mad at them and you know they're there. That's not good for the kid. Men, do what you got to do. You get your peace after this baby is prepared, covered, and knows they're loved. Then you can get your peace. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. I had to drop this. I hope that you get it. I hope that you share it. I hope that it it resonates with my people. But I, and, and it's because I love you. On that note, I'm out of here. And with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like black men lead which is a rite of passage uh, initiative and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Conceptual. Yeah, he sounded better than Jay. People talk Real about talk. it.
all of the elements.